Senator Coons. And thank you, Chairman Durbin. Uh, Director Ray, uh, welcome. Thank you for your service and your testimony today. And let me join uh, with my colleagues in conveying our condolences on the line of duty deaths of Special, special Agents Daniel Alfin and Laura Schwarzenberger. Um, it has been a long time since there's been a Special Agent line of duty death, but every loss of life uh, by those who are serving us and protecting us is uh, too many. And uh, we join in grieving their loss and hope you'll convey that to their families. But our purpose here today is to focus principally on what happened in this complex, in this building, in the Capitol on January 6th. Charleston, Charlottesville, Pittsburgh, El Paso, Kenosha, and right here in the U.S. Capitol. These are just some of the recent examples where far-right extremists and white supremacists have terrorized this country, their fellow citizens, and murdered individuals. We all condemn violence by anyone of any political persuasion, but we have to be honest about the significant threats we face, and that's the only way we can work together to take steps to confront them. Um, I think it's uh, critical to that process for us to uncover the real facts of what happened, and given uh, some of the misinformation being spread by some uh, colleagues, I just would appreciate your redressing, readdressing a couple of uh, questions. Um, can you speak with clarity about what we know about the January 6th the riot here at the Capitol. You've said there have been, I think, 280 arrests uh, so far. Um, has there so far been any evidence that the January 6th riot here, the insurrection, was organized by people simply posing as supporters of President Trump's? We have not seen any evidence of that, uh, certainly at this point. Is there point. any evidence at all that it was organized or planned or carried out by groups like Antifa or Black Lives Matter? We have not seen any evidence to that effect thus far in the investigation. And is there any doubt that the people who stormed the Capitol included um, white supremacists and other uh, far-right extremist organizations? Uh, there's no doubt that it included uh, individuals that we would call militia violent extremists, uh, and then in some instances individuals that were racially motivated violent extremists who advocate for you know the superiority of the white race. But the militia violent extremists is probably at the moment uh, trending the biggest bucket, if you will. Well, you face challenges, we as a nation uh, face challenges with extremists of all stripes, types, backgrounds, motivations. Um, as the new chair of the Subcommittee on Privacy and Technology and Law, I'm concerned about how um, extremists have used social media platforms to organize and incite violence, and in some ways about how social media platforms work uh, to accentuate or accelerate. Um, those uh, who have extreme views and to potentially radicalize those who, who don't hold those views. I led a letter with 14 colleagues uh, last November to Facebook raising concerns about the adequacy of their enforcement of their own policies against uh, violence and incitement. Um, can you speak to the extent to which the January 6th uh, attack on the Capitol was organized um, through social media platforms? So certainly uh, social media on January 6th, as for the domestic violent extremist threat more broadly, uh, has become a major factor, a catalyst, if you will. Uh, the increased speed, dissemination, efficiency, accessibility that it provides, it facilitates a greater interconnected uh, uh, nature in a more decentralized way and so we you know I sometimes say terrorism today and we saw it on the 6th moves at the speed of social media um, and we try to work with social media companies uh, to uh, to get them to more aggressively use the tools that they have to police their own platforms under terms of service etc uh, and in particular to cooperate with us so that we can bring justice for those who hijack these companies' platforms to engage in, in some of the conduct we're talking about. Uh, and that's where you've heard a little bit about the encryption issue come up. That's, a, that's an important part of this. The, uh, we are moving in a direction. We saw it on the 6th, and we're seeing it more and more every day in this country, where violent extremists, just like other bad actors, are taking advantage of encrypted platforms to evade law enforcement. And that social media companies and the technology companies are moving more and more in a direction where if we don't come up collectively with some kind of solution, uh, it's not going to matter how bulletproof 
the legal process is or how horrific, horrific the crime is or how heartbreaking the victims are, we will not be able to get access to the content and the evidence that we need to protect the American people. And then I think we will all rue the day. Well, Director, this, this area um, raises a lot of very complex questions of civil liberties, of uh, individual rights, fundamental rights to free expression. But uh, I, am, I am also concerned about ways in which uh, online disinformation and conspiracy theories lead to radicalization and, and help pave the way for this particularly uh, tragic event in the history of our democracy and how some of the ways in which social platforms are structured, social media platforms are structured to accelerate um, the spread of disinformation. Um, how policymakers and platforms confront these issues are going to be complex, and I look forward to uh, working with you to get the facts as the FBI develops them about what happened on January 6th. Um, two last questions, if I might. My colleague, Senator Whitehouse, asked about responding to outstanding requests for information, and I agree. Some of the stonewalling that we saw by a number of agencies uh, over the previous administration isn't acceptable. Can you just uh, reassure me the FBI will be as responsive as possible to information requests from this committee? Absolutely. It's my, you know, my strong view is that you all have an important key function to perform in terms of your oversight of the FBI as with other agencies. Uh, and it pains and frustrates me when we're not able to be as responsive uh, as you need us to be. Uh, and I commit to doing my best to see if we can work with you all to, to get better on that front. Thank you. Last, um, Senator Feinstein uh, asked you a series of questions about the record number of Nick's denials uh, last year. Um, this is when someone goes in, tries to buy a gun, gets run through the background check system and is denied. Um, they're a person prohibited, often because they're a convicted felon. Um, I'm soon going to be introducing a bill with a colleague on this committee um, that would simply require that when there is a, an attempt to buy that is denied because someone is a person prohibited, that notification be given uh, to state law enforcement. That is the law in some states. It is not the law in a majority of states. Does that seem to you something that would be a good additional tool in the toolkit uh, to allow state and local law enforcement to act on the tip that someone who is a person prohibited has just lied and tried to procure a weapon? Uh, certainly, uh, I think the, the lied and tried um, um, information is often a valuable tool uh, from an investigative perspective in preventing uh, more serious conduct. Uh, and we'd be happy to, uh, to meet with you or engage with you to provide a little bit better sense of how all this works from an operational perspective. Um, I know that uh, the key consumer of the information here, as your question alludes, uh, our state and local law enforcement. So I would want to make sure that we do it in a way where we work with them as to what they would find most useful. Uh, certainly, as I said in response to Senator Feinstein, the volume of NICS checks overall, and with it the volume as a small subset of denials, uh, has exploded over the course of the last year. Uh, and so I, I am mindful of the, the resource burden that it puts on, on everybody in the law enforcement system. But uh, but be happy to talk with you more about it. Thanks. I look forward to working with you on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.